up everyone it's your girl brain shanae and today i'm here to share with y'all my spring anticipated releases now mind you there's maybe one or two titles that are going to be um released sometime in the summer but i went ahead and decided to add this into my spring anticipated releases because i don't hear people talking about it about these titles enough so i'm here to share with y'all my anticipated releases so let's go so for this first book it's going to be coming out april the 9th and that is the last five hunter this is by selene goldenberg and i i love this cover i think it was the cover that got me the most for this one and i'm so excited because i was able to receive the arc of this particular title which i mean i can't wait which i need to i need to read this in april so it's probably going to be in my april tbr a video so stay tuned for that but just look at this cover it's gorgeous and it's giving and so let me go ahead and read the synopsis for you because not only did the like the cover like already sold me but then this like the synopsis like yeah I was like yep this is a book that I definitely want to read and so it says ambitious fi hunter and perpetual lone wolf x finds his road to glory interrupted when a heavily pregnant runaway enlists his help to execute excuse me to escape through the ghost infected forest x the youngest member of the five hunters order has spent his life slaying the ghosts and demons of Sarum kingdom while he takes greek pride in his mystical trade collecting dwindling bounties and peddling butchered spirit organs lacks the glory he craves he's determined to hunt down shahala a demon of nightmares of madness who has eluded even x's masters in a provincial village along the way, Arinya, a charming Mia-born champion, saves him from an ass-kicking despite being nine months pregnant. Wow. In return, she asks him to escort her, her through the dangerous spirit-filled forest where, where ghosts salivate over the scent of the unborn. But as more of Arinya's secrets emerge and the elusive demon nears, X must face dangers from both men and monsters or lose not only the respect of the five hunters, but the hunters themselves, along with the woman he's trying not to fall in love with. So, do, need I say more? <laughs> like I said, the cover already got me, but then the synopsis sold me, right? Like, it, it, like I'm sold. <laughs> like, I... I can't wait. So like, like I said, once again, the, uh, the last fight hunter by Selene Goldenberg is going to be coming out April 9th. So be prepared, you know, make sure you get me your money, right. Or, you know, make sure you uh, request it from your library so that you have access to it. So yeah, definitely keep an eye out for this title. And so let's move on to the next title, which I'm really excited for. Now, this next title, it's also going to be coming out April the 9th. And this will be the first, well, the second book that I've read by this particular author. I'm not, I wasn't really a fan of her YA series, um, but I'm going to give it a go. This will be my first official uh, adult book by her particularly. And so the book that I'm talking about that comes out April 9th is going to be uh, The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. And I'm like, I really wasn't a fan of the Grishaverse series. And I think that just put a bad taste in my mouth. So I never really attempted to pick up any of her, of the, of her other works. But I'm here to give her another chance. And I keep hearing good things about her other books as well. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna wipe the slate clean. And let's just start reading, you know, reading some of other other works. I might have, I might have not been a fan of the Grishaverse, but I might be a fan of her other works. So like I said, this comes out April 9th, and for the synopsis, it says, In a shabby house on a shabby street in the new capital of Madrid, Luisa Corrado uses scraps of magic to get through her days of endless toil as a scullion, but, or scullion. But when her scheming mistress discovers the lump of a servant cowering in the kitchen is actually hiding a talent for little miracles, she demands Luisa use, use those gifts to better the family's social position. What begins as simple amusement for the bored nobility takes a perilous turn when Luisa garners the notice of Antonio Perez, uh, the disgraced secretary to Spain's king. Still reeling from the defeat of his armada, the king is desperate for any advantage in the war against England's heretic queen, and Perez will stop at nothing to regain the king's favor. So just with that alone has that historical type of fiction vibe going on, which I do like. And then it continues to say, determined to seize this one chance to better her fortunes, Luisa plunges into a world of seers and alchemists, holy men and huskers, where the line between magic, science, and fraud is never certain. But as her notary, 
uh, grows, so does the danger that her Jewish blood will doom her to the inquisition, or excuse me, inquisition wrath. <laughs> uh, she will have to use every bit of her wits and will do and will to survive, even if that means enlisting the help of Gillian Santangel, an embittered immortal familiar whose own secrets could prove deadly for them both. So yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna give her another go. <laughs> I'm gonna give Lee Bardugo another go. Like I already, like I love the cover, um, but what sold me was this synopsis, I, I feel, like I strongly feel because I'm able to like, oh, like this is like historical type of vibes. You still got magic and stuff like alchemists, all that good stuff. So I'm here for it. And then there's an immortal on top of that sign me up. So I'm, I'm really excited about this particular book. And once again, this book comes out April 9th. So literally the same day as <laughs> the last Fire Hunter. So yeah, cannot wait for this one as well. Now this next title, it also comes out April the 9th. And from what I was hearing about this particular title, it is YA. But I feel like I'm not, I'm not, I don't really read a lot of YA. Now, mind you, I really don't. But this is like the title of it alone was beautiful, like was amazing as well as the cover of the, of the book. And then also the synopsis sold me. Uh, so it's literally a, da a dazzling romance, romantic fantasy um, that is inspired by uh, Pacific Island mythology. So I'm like, okay, sign me up. And so the book that I'm talking about is Dragon Fruit. And just look at this cover. It is giving and I absolutely am loving it. Like just look at it. Just beautiful, 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 beautiful. And so with the synopsis of it, it says in the old tales, it is written that the egg of a sea dragon, dragon fruit, holds within within it the power to undo a person's greatest sorrow. An unwanted marriage, a painful illness, an unpaid debt gone. But as with all things that promise the moon and the stars and offer hope when hope has gone, the tale comes with a warning. It said, and then begins to continue to say, every wish demands a price. And so it talks, it says, but Hanale of Tamarind is the cherished daughter of an old island family. But when her father steals a sea dragon egg meant for an ailing princess, she is forced into a life of exile. In the years that follow, Hanale finds solace in studying the majestic sea dragons that roam the Nomanami Sea until one day an encounter with a female dragon offers her what she desires most, a chance to return home and to write and to write a terrible wrong. And then we have Samitanelli, or Sam for short, is the last remaining prince of Tamarind, but he can never inherit the throne. For Timurin is a matriarchal society. With his mother ill and his grandmother nearing the end of her reign, Sam is left with, with two to marry or to find a cure for the sickness that has plagued his mother for 10 long years. When a childhood companion returns from exile, she brings with her something he has not felt in a very long time, hope. And then it begins to say, but Hanel and Sam are not the only ones searching for the dragon fruit. And as they battle enemies, both near and far, there is another danger they cannot escape, that of the dragon fruit itself. So I'm like, wow, this is really good. And the fact that this world is like, it's only, it's controlled by, it's a matriarchal society. I'm like, wow. I'm like, okay, yes, sign me up. <laughs> so I really cannot wait for this book. Like last book, the, these books I've been sharing with y'all so far they all come out April 9th and I'm really hoping that uh, like I get to, through, to my library because I'm really trying to utilize my library even more like I still use Libby for audiobooks and um, ebooks but I want to actually get physical copies as well where I walk in into a library and get some books <laughs> so I'm really excited for this title as well uh, let me know down below in the comment section if you've heard of these books or if you're interested in any of them as well but let's move on to the next book that I'm really ex excited for so this next book is is the first book in a new uh, fantasy fantasy series and I'm really excited to get into this one um <laughs> I love the cover it is giving and so the book that I'm here to to pretty much bring to your attention is The Silver Blood Promise and this is by James Logan. This book is going to be coming out May the 7th. So just look at the cover. Tell me what you think. But, but anyways, let me go ahead and read the synopsis. So it says Lucan Gordova is a card sharp uh, academy dropout and thanks to a duel that ended badly, the disgraced heir to an ancient noble house. His days consist of cheap wine, rigged <laughs> card games, and wondering how he might win back the life he threw away. 
When Lucan discovers that his estranged father has been murdered in strange circumstances, he finds fresh purpose. Deprived of his chance to make amends for his mistakes, he vows to unravel the mystery behind his father's death. His search for answers leads him to Safrana, fabled city of merchant princes, where anything can be bought if one has the coin. Lucan only seeks the truth, but instead he finds danger and secrets in every shadow. And they continue to say, for in Safrana, everything has a price, and the price of truth is the deadliest of all. Mm, 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 mm. I'm excited for this one. I really am. Like, if y'all don't know, like, I'm into like my fantasy era. I said it. I said it. <laughs> like, I love high fantasy. I, I just love it. I, I, I love adult fantasy as well. I think after reading Brandon Sanderson in, in 2022, that whole year uh, with Brie, like, I just want some fantasy. I just want it all, right? I want to consume it. I just, I just want it. So I'm really excited for this one. Yes, it comes out May 7th, but that's fine. That is perfectly fine. I can wait. I will wait patiently for this title. But yeah, this is my first book that I'll be reading by James Logan. And I'm, I'm really excited to see what this book has in store. And it just looks really good. And it's a chunk, a chunky book. It's 528 pages. So I'm here for it. I'm ready to step in and step into a whole new world where I'm pretty much seeing where the main character goes and what decisions that he's going to make for his future and to find out who killed his father. So yeah, I'm really excited about this title. And uh, this might need to be a buddy read. So whoever wants to buddy read with, with me with this, please let me know down in the comments because I'm ready. I am ready. Now this next title I'm really excited for. The last book that I read by this author was Kaikei, which came out in 2022. And I just really, really enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five stars. So now that I know another book is coming out uh, May the 21st, I'm here for it. So the book that I'm going to be talking about right now is Goddess of the River by Vishnavi Patel. Yes, she uh, wrote Kaikei, which I loved. And now we have another beautiful cover just look at this. I, I just love the blues and the orange and the gold. It's just, it's giving. <laughs> like All these books are giving. But <laughs> let me read the synopsis for this one. So it says, a powerful reimagining of the story of Ganga, of Ganga, hopefully I'm saying that right, goddess of the river, and her doomed mortal son from, from Vishnavi's novel author of the instant New York Times bestselling author Kake. It goes on to say, a mother and a son, a goddess and a prince, a curse and an oath, a river whose course will change the fate of the world. Ganga, joyful goddess of the river, serves as caretaker to the mischievous godlings who roam her banks. But when their antics incur the wrath of a powerful sage, Ganga is cursed to become mortal, bound to her human form until she fulfills the obligations of the curse. Though she knows nothing of mortal life, Ganga weds King Shantanu and becomes a queen, determined to regain her freedom no matter the cost. But in a cruel turn of a fate, just as she is freed of her binding, she is forced to leave her infant son behind. Her son, Prince Devarata, unwittingly carries the legacy of Ganga's curse. And when he makes an oath that, will never, that he will never claim his father's throne, he sets in motion a chain of events that will end in a terrible, tra terrible and tragic war. As the years unfold, Ganga and Devarata are drawn together again and again. Each confluence another step on a path that has been written in the stars. In this deeply moving and masterful, masterful tale of duty, destiny, and the unwavering bond between mother and son. Mm, doesn't that sound good? I'm excited. But like I said, this comes out May the 21st. So we have some time. And like, if you haven't read Kai Kei, you have time like I like Kaike was just it was a masterpiece I really really enjoyed it and I think you all will love it too if you haven't read it but just in case if you want to read something prior to waiting for goddess of the river you have Kaike but yeah I'm really excited for this title and I just cannot wait when it comes out because I'm going to instantly read this probably the following month because yeah I don't know how much how long how much longer I could wait <laughs> to read it now this next book this is the book that I was talking about earlier that comes out uh pretty much in the summer uh particularly June 25th but I still wanted to share it with you all because I don't hear people talking about it or not talking about it enough um but this is a Filipino inspired fantasy it's and it's a debut um and uh, the cover it's a it's beautiful so here it is the book is Saints of Storm and Sorrow this is by Gabriella Buba and 
I'm excited for this, y'all. Not only is it a Filipino-inspired uh, fantasy debut, but it has um, it has an a, a bisexual nun hiding a goddess-given gift and who is unwillingly transformed into a lightning rod for her people's struggle against colonization. I need, do, I, do I need to say more? Let me read you some more. Let me read you more of the synopsis. Um, so it says, Maria Lonerin has been living a double life for as long as she can remember. To the world, she is Sister Maria, dutiful nun and devoted servant of Nalia's Conician's colonizers. But behind closed doors, she is a storm caller, chosen daughter of the Anian goddess Anatun Dabu, and hiding not only from the Kaliansin and their witch hunts, but also from the vengeful eye of her slighted goddess. Lunarin does what she can to protect her fellow onions and the small family she has created in the convent, her lover, Cantanilia, Cantalina and Kat's younger sister, Inez. Then it goes on to say, Lunarian is determined to keep her head down until one day she makes a devastating discovery, which threatens to tear her family apart. In desperation, she turns to help, uh, she turns for help to Alan de Kila, heir to Onion's most powerful family who has been ardently in love with her for years. But this choice sets in motion a chain of events chain of events beyond her control, awakening Anatan Tabu's rage and putting everyone Lyrian's loves in terrible danger. Torn between the call of Alan's magic and Catalina's jealousy, her duty to her family and to her people, Lyrian can no longer keep Antonin Tabu's fury at bay. And then it goes on to say, the goddess of storms demands vengeance and she will sweep aside anyone who stands in her way. So, I'm really excited for this one. I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't hear people talking about it enough. Um, literally, in, like in the synopsis, it says it's perfect for fans uh, that love the Poppy War and also the Jasmine Throne, um, which I love the Poppy War by R.F. Kwong. <sighs> so beautiful. So just with that alone and saying that it's perfect for fans for these for those particular fantasies I'm very excited to see what this story brings like like I said the cover is giving and the synopsis sounded like okay I'm here for it um but yeah oh man I'm excited but I have to wait till June 25th but there it is what it is I'm gonna wait patiently for it um but yep those that is it those are my spring anticipated releases even though the last book does come out in the summertime but who cares <laughs> I still wanted to share with you all you know the books I'm really excited for um but that is it I really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please 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 give me a thumbs up also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future but once again, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you all are staying healthy and staying safe and I will catch y'all next time. Bye everyone.